Okay, welcome back to the Maths Guy. We are looking at how to round any number to the nearest hundredths. Let's go. Okay, we're going to be looking at these four questions today, but first we need to understand actually where the hundredths part of our number is. So if we just take this first example, we have 56.897 or 56 and 897 thousandths. So let's just put ourselves some labels on the top of these numbers so we know which column is which. The six, this will be our ones column, hopefully we know that. This is our tens, and I'm gonna put back my decimal. The eight is in the tenths column, the nine is in the hundreds column, and the seven is in the thousands column. So we're rounding to the nearest hundredths, which will be this column, just here where the nine is. So to do that, we're just gonna follow these simple steps. First, we're gonna underline the value that's in the hundreds column, in this case a nine. Then we're gonna look at step two, which says look next door. And I'm gonna look next door to the right to see what number is gonna influence me, whether I round it up or keep it as it is. But how do we do that? Well, luckily we have a little rhyme. We say five or more, let it soar, which means round it to the next number, or four, or less, let it rest. Keep it as the number it is. So I'm just gonna fill the rest of the numbers in and now I'm ready to start. So we've already underlined the nine. I can look next door and see that we have a seven. Well, where is seven? It's up here above the five. So therefore five or more, let it soar. So I'm gonna use the seven to let me bump my nine up. But I can't really get any further than a nine, can I? Well, I'm actually rounding to the nearest hundredths, which is this whole area here and we have, at the moment, 89, so I can round it up to 56.90, or 90 hundredths. I had 89, and I've rounded it up to 90 hundredths. Question two, this time a six is in my hundredths column, and I'm simply gonna look next door. I have a nine, well, a nine is all the way up here, and remember, five or more, let it soar, so the nine is gonna turn my six into a seven. So now instead of having 3.06, I have 3.07, seven hundredths. Okay, question three, looks a lot harder because we've got loads more digits, but actually it's super simple because all we care about is the number that's in the hundredths column and the number that's next door. So first let's find our hundredths column. It's gonna be two digits after the decimal and it's a five this time. I look next door and I can see that we have a five again. And remember, five or more, let it soar. Four or less, let it rest. It's five or more, so I'm gonna bump this number up. So my 75 becomes a 57.76. Great, okay, question four. I'm actually gonna change really quickly because I wanna show you what happens if we have to four or less. Okay, there we go, made a quick change. So following the steps as normal, underline the hundredths, three this time, and now I can look next door and uh-oh, I have a three. So let's remember our rhyme. Five or more, let it soar. Four or less, let it rest. Three is less than four, so we would let my other three, the one in the hundreds column, rest. So my answer would become 0 0.73. Okay, there we go. That is everything you need to know about rounding to a hundredths. Remember, underline the number that is in the hundreds column. Then simply look next door and see whether we're gonna round it up or keep it as it is, remembering our phrase, five or more, let it soar, four or less, let it rest. Then we just simply write the new number for our answer. Here are four questions for you to have a go at. Put the answers in the comment section. I'm gonna mark them all. And there we go, guys. That is rounding to a hundredths. If this was useful, subscribe to the channel. But for now, peace out.